Hello, welcome to the first in a series of training videos related to using KYHMIS. Now first let's get started. Let's go ahead and go to the actual, we're going to go to the training site. To get to the training site, you see I'm in Google Chrome right now. I'm going to type in sp5.servicept.com slash Kentucky. Now, when we use the term KYHMIS, or just HMIS, we're not referring to the actual title of the system we use. We're, it's more of a description. Uh, HMIS stands for Homeless Management Information System. So all we're doing with this is we're capturing information about the individuals that we serve in different agencies throughout the state. The actual system that we use is ServicePoint, created by Bowman Systems. So this is the training site. There's also a live site. The benefit of the training site is that you can put whatever information you want into it. You're not going to break the system. It allows you a chance to go in and tinker with it and learn the ins and outs and to really understand what, what it is you're doing. So I'm going to sign in to my account here. And in this video, we're going to talk about the overall layout of the system. Now the training site is laid out almost exactly like the live site. It looks exactly the same. The main difference is that this banner at the top is orange on the training site. Now sometimes it doesn't show up as orange, but it always indicates up at the top left by saying training site. So this is called the dashboard. Okay, we have this menu on the left that lets us get to all of the apps within Service Point. We've got Service Point training site at the top and then whatever agency you're associated with below as well as the date. You can actually upload a logo for your agency here. Up at the top right, I've got my name and then the title of myself within Service Point. Do note, this is not, you know, when we set users up in the system, this is not intended to reflect your actual job title. We basically provide three different titles to this. You'll see mine is System Administrator 2, okay? That's one of the highest levels of access in the system. The others we have are agency admin. Uh, that's got a little fewer access privileges than system admins, but more than regular case managers. And each agency is basically designated one agency admin. Below that we have case manager three. And what that does is that's basically basic data entry into the system. So most people at the agencies that participate in KYHMIS are going to be at the case manager 3 level. Again, that is not to say that you are a case manager, but that's just how it's designated in the system. So on this top bar here, we have a global search bar that allows you to search within KYHMIS. Do note, this is not how you actually search for clients. We'll get into that in a little bit. Over here, this exclamation mark, this is user alerts. Now what this generally relates to are system news, which is over here in this little window. We'll go over that in a second. You'll see it pops up a little bubble when you have new alerts. We have this star here, which represents favorites. Now this corresponds to this favorites tab right here. So if you have, let's say you have a small agency with very few clients or Maybe you just have a few clients that you need to keep track of on a more consistent basis. Well, normally this would involve going into the system and searching for them, but you can actually use this star here to mark them as a favorite so that they always show up on this favorites list right here. That way you never have to search for them and they're always just a click away. This question mark here is the help menu. Now, this is actually a really good, useful help system. Now, when I bring this up here, you'll see it's, it's very detailed. It provides a lot of screenshots. It's very helpful to use when you get stuck or you're confused about a specific subject or anything like that. On the left, you can see different areas of service point. So, for example, I can break it down into client point. And let's say I have a question about an ROI. Maybe I need a better understanding of what it is or how it works or how to use it. So if I click on ROI, I can see basics, how to add one, how to edit one, and how to delete one. So if I click on basics, it's going to give me a description of what they are and how they're used. 
If I click on add, it will give me screenshots and show me detailed information about how to actually go in and add a release of information. And this is how this help system works with every other option. It's very helpful. I strongly encourage people to use it if you ever get confused or just want some quick help on navigating the system. Now, as I said, over to the left, this is the menu to access the different apps within Service Point. We have this last viewed tab. Whenever you're going through and you're going to different clients, uh, they start to populate on this last viewed tab. So instead of searching for them, again, if you need to go back to them, you can just bring up this last viewed tab and click their name and ID number right there. What we're going to be focusing on today is Client Point. You'll see when I click Client Point, it goes into a client search window. More on this in a moment. These other apps in here are used for different purposes, but we're not going to be covering those in this. The reports option here will get you to a list of reports that you can run. The primary reports that we use are located in the art server here. That will be uh, covered in detail in a different video. And then admin. These are the admin options for a system administrator. There, uh, there are a lot less options if you are a agency admin or a case manager. And then you have logout, of course. So here I have system news. So what system news is, is they're news bulletins that are provided by system administrators and they can be seen by anyone who uses the system within the state. Agency news, those are added by actual you know, users at the agency. So other people within that agency can see them, but no one else can. And it's really simple to add a news bulletin. You just click Add Agency News, throw in your headline and your actual news bulletin, and you can put in a date. Now, you can also customize the dashboard a little more. So if I bring down this arrow here for Customize Homepage Dashboard, let's say I want to add a specific count report. So you'll see it pops up a new little window here with four quadrants. So if I click the pencil, this pencil by the way, everywhere you see it in the system refers to edit. So if I click edit, it breaks it down by each of the quadrants, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. So just for a quick example, let's say for the top left quadrant, this one right here, let's say I want to add some kind of a report. So I'm going to go into this end user and case manager reports section and there are a lot of different things you can choose to show here. So clients with ROIs that are about to expire or clients that are entered into your program but haven't exited yet. Anything like that. So I'm going to choose that. You can select a date range. So let's say this year. I can choose system-wide, I can choose a specific provider or a reporting group. So if I choose provider here, I can just search. Now there's a specific provider area I'm going to use throughout these videos and that's this dummy project created under Kentucky Housing Corporation. This is what I use in all of my trainings. Including subordinates refers to, uh, if you just choose, for example, adult and tenant services, right? That's the agency, okay? The subordinates of that agency are the actual programs within the agency. So here we have a preventative housing program or a rapid rehousing program. So if I choose include subordinates, it's also gonna report on those program levels underneath the agency level. But I'm gonna keep this, and if I hit okay, then you'll see it populates a zero here. That's just because there are no clients in this provider that fall into that category of clients with an entry but no exit. But if there were, then I can click this zero here and it would show me a list of these clients. It would show their ID number, their last and first name, middle name, social security number, date of birth, etc. And then you could click on their name and go right into their record. It's really useful for keeping track of information uh, such as this or follow-ups that you need to do, etc. So if you want to save the changes, you can click save at the top, or I'm going to undo changes. I don't need that. 
Now, some of the most important features of the home page dashboard, as well as service point anywhere you're looking at it, are in the upper right. There are these options right here. So you see for me, I have shadow, backdate, and this it says art connected. Now, since I'm a system administrator too, I see things a little differently than agency admins or case managers. So what shadowing allows me to do is it allows me to choose a user that's at a different level. So you see this user is at an agency admin level. And I can click this green plus sign and it allows me to see the system as they do. So you'll see here, for example, they actually have accounts report with expiring ROIs. Okay, and they have six in there. But now you'll see another option has come up now that I've shadowed a user, and that is enter data as. Now, enter data as and backdate are two of the most important features to pay attention to in Service Point. Now, if I log into the system and just start entering information in, if I just start putting information about my clients into the system, what it's going to do is it's going to associate all of those answers, those responses, to my agency, but not my program level. So if I have a client that's in an emergency shelter program, for example, I want to make sure his information is getting associated with that program, not my agency overall. That's what Enter Data As allows you to do. If I choose Enter Data As, you can see a list of program areas that I can actually choose, and these are all level fours. Now what this means, now you have a, a kind of a hierarchy of, of levels within the system. So, for example, level one would represent Bowman, the people that created Service Point. They have the highest level of access. Level two would refer to the COCs, the, the different continuums of care throughout the state, Balance of State, Louisville, and Lexington. Level three refers to an agency, so in this case, Communicare. And then level four represents the actual programs that have been set up underneath that agency. Now this one has a couple of random ones that wouldn't normally be selected, but this is because it's the, it's the training site and these are used for other purposes. So here I see that there's a Communicare, there's a transitional housing program, this TH here. So this is a transitional housing program for Communicare. So if I have a client that's in that transitional housing program, and if I have some information that I need to update for them, the very first thing I would wanna do is go in, click enter data as, and hit this plus sign beside that. Now you'll see it populates up here, enter data as, and then it's got my program selected. This way, whenever I run reports for that program area, everything's gonna be there, it's all gonna show up correctly. It may not do that if you don't use an option for enter data as. Now, in this case, with all of these training videos we're gonna do, we're gonna be using this Kentucky Housing Corporation dummy project. Okay, this is just a just what it sounds like. This is a dummy project that's just been made for the training site for users to use and play around with. So I'm going to use this plus sign to populate it up there. Now all of my responses that I put in for any clients are going to be associated with that dummy project. As I mentioned, backdate is also another really important feature of Service Point that you really need to pay attention to. So it is 10.07 a.m. on March 6th, 2015. So that means if I start entering information about clients, it's going to be time stamped for 10.07 a.m. on March 6th, 2015. But the way that Service Point operates is that it's intended that you put information about the clients in at the time these changes, these events are happening for them. That's what Backdate allows you to do. So let me give you an example scenario. So say that a client comes in on January 1st and says, hey, I just started a job where I receive, you know, $800 a month in income. Well, proper operating procedure would say that you would go into the system that day and enter their information, but we all know that that's not likely to happen. Let's say it's not until January 3rd that you're able to sit down and put this information into the system. Backdate allows you to jump back to the date that it actually happened. So in this case, it would be January 1st. And then now, when you enter this information 
all of these responses will be time stamped as if you answered the information at the time that it happened. Now, this is something that is required to be done with the system, is to make sure that these time stamps are done correctly. Time isn't as important. You will see it defaults to 8 a.m. This is uh, the default setting for everywhere you see a date within Service Point, the way we have it set up here in Kentucky. Now you'll see if I wanted to backdate to January 1st, all I would have to do is change the date there and hit set backdate. And you'll see this turns yellow at the top. Yellow always indicates that you are in backdate mode. Just means that you have a backdate selected. And then also it populates up here beside the term backdate. So you'll see I'm backdated to January 1st. If I ever need to change that, I can just click on the date here and it brings the bot back, box back up and I can just change the date. Now, if you, let's say you have a stack of, uh, you know, papers with information about clients that you haven't gotten to put into the system yet and you're sitting down and you want to enter these in, you'll be changing that back date a lot to correspond to the date that an event occurred. And if you want to get out of backdate mode completely, you just hit this red X beside the date and it removes it. Finally, you have art. Unread messages here is what it says now. So this refers to the connection we have to the art server. Now the server between service point and the art reports, those are different. Those are on different servers. So when this normally says art connected, it just means that it's connected to the server that holds our reporting tool. Okay, and then I could just click right here to go straight into those art reports and, and start running them. That's all it means. Now this really covers the basics of the service point dashboard as well as some of the general layout of the system. Uh, many of these things are always shown no matter where you're at in service point. This top banner uh, as well as this bar here and the menu to the left. Those are always on the system. This uh, inner dashboard here, this is only when you're on the home page. Now in the next videos we're going to explore client point and how to actually enter data about our clients and some of the things you need to know about that. Thank you very much.